people, it's me, Ginny Metherill. I'm back from half term, hence why you had so many shorts videos last week. However, today's video is going to make up for it. I want to talk about cord cutting and show you how to do it because there are a couple of issues with this. So therefore, we're going to look at how to cord cut properly. So what is cord cutting? Well, it is a spell that you would use when you want to sever relations of the past. This can be friendships, lovers or situations. It can be any of these types of issues. For example, a situation that you might need to cord cut from is when you were younger and you suffered some trauma, say a terrible car crash abuse, whatever that situation is, and you wish to remove those unhelpful memories from that situation in your present day. And so a great way to do this would be cord cutting. Likewise, if you have an ex-boyfriend and you just can't get over them, you can do a cord cutting ceremony for that. However, before I show you how to do the cord cutting ceremony, I just want to explain why you shouldn't do a cord cutting ceremony, which I can't find anyone doing on the internet, actually. Maybe I'm just very bad at looking, but nobody appears to have got the bad sides of cord cutting. So let me, Ginny Metherill, tell you all about them. The first downside of cord cutting is to do with an ex relationship. Say you want to remove an ex from your life. Be warned about this. It's dangerous to remove your past because your past makes you who you are today. So, so I had an ex who hung my moon stars and the world and I did a cord cutting ceremony when he chucked me because I was so upset and I just wanted to forget this emotional awfulness that I was going through. So what happened? I did forget him. However, it was only a temporary forgetfulness. And this came back to bite me in the future because I hadn't overcome those actual feelings for him. And so when I met my now husband, I wasn't able to progress that relationship properly. And we had a lot of issues. Most of them were due to me and my supposed thoughts over my ex because I hadn't got over him properly. And I hadn't got over him properly because I'd done a bloody cord cutting ceremony and I'd done it too soon. So doing the cord cutting ceremony actually stopped me moving forward with my life in a relatively simple manner and caused problems further down the line. Likewise, if you want to do a cord cutting ceremony against some form of trauma, make sure that you have got over that trauma first because you need to have worked through your issues with that trauma in order to move forward with your life sensibly. Otherwise, it will come back in some way or some form. You need to face your past in order to know who you are now and who you want to be in the future. And if you delete half that past from you, then going forward into the future can become more difficult. This is not, however, a hard and fast rule. For example, like the First World War, when they were held in the trenches, which was possibly the worst kind of human torture I can imagine causes the brain to go into overload. And as a result, the best way for the brain to deal with that is to shut down and not go back to it, compartmentalise it and not face it because it is too traumatic. So cord cutting from facing hell, which is what I believe that was, pure hell, would be a good idea. So it's a bit difficult, isn't it, where you should and why you should cord cut. I would recommend doing a cord cut when you have overcome a relationship, you know, you don't care about that person or you don't care about that situation anymore, but it's nagging at you. Good idea then to do a cord cut. That is perfectly acceptable. My last piece of advice of how not to do a cord cutting ceremony is to ensure that you know exactly what you're cord cutting. For example, if you had a traumatic childhood and you wish to cut that trauma because you feel that you have faced it, overcome it and now would like to move on, you've got to be very, 
very specific about exactly what you're going to cut out. Because if you cut, say, a block from your childhood of several years of whatever was happening to you, then you're going to cut out not just the bad stuff, but you're going to cut out the good stuff too. And that will cause even more problems for you. So when you're doing a cord cutting, I really recommend writing down what situation or person or event you wish to cut ties from completely and be specific. It might not be the whole person. It might just be their bit of behaviour. For example, let's go back to that ghastly ex-boyfriend of mine who hung my moon, my stars and my sun. Now, when I was ready to do the cord cutting, what I was actually cord cutting was not him. I was cord cutting my emotional response to being chucked by him because that was very traumatic and that is what I don't wish to remember. It was difficult. I don't want to go there. I don't care about that anymore. However, I don't want to cut him from my life. The times that we had which were good were very, very good. The times that we had which were horrid were also me learning how to be in a relationship. It was one of my first relationships, so I wasn't very good at them. You know, I'm much better nowadays. So beware about what you want to cut because it's got to be very specific and that means your cord cutting ceremony will work to great effect. So how do you do it? Well, here you go. I always start by cleansing my working area using a joystick of my favourite scent. I like to use birthday cake candles because I'm extraordinarily impatient and they don't last very long, especially when you're cord cutting. The seashell doesn't really have any representation here, but I just like to use them because they're pretty. Traditional witchcraft always uses red as a sign of protection and that is why I'm using red thread in this instance. As the candle burns through the thread, it will cut your ties from your past. Would you do a cord cutting ceremony? What do you think of my restrictions on it? Do you agree? I mean, sometimes I feel a bit like an unlicensed therapist doing witchcraft. And I don't want to be an unlicensed therapist because I'm not. But witchcraft is to help people get to their better self in order to move forward. Do you have any thoughts about this? I am not the goddess of all knowledge on cord cutting. These are my personal thoughts and experiences and I would love to hear yours. Leave me a comment down below. For the rest of you, don't forget to go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill to check out my coven meeting. We did earth magic this week. We were looking at the difference between prana, which is your own magical ability, and earth magic and how to use each one and combine them. It was very, very wonderful. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next week. And as you've made it this far, why not check out these playlists I've put here just for you.